my lovely, lovely imps. Rev your engines! Because there's a new Mad Max! Mad Max Saga! A Furiosa Tale! No, wait. Furiosa, a Mad Max Saga Tale! No, I don't remember. It's Furiosa. You should go see it right away! Because it is high octane! The eight cylinders firing in your ears at all times. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Furiosa was awesome. George Miller and his entire wonderful cast and crew nailed it once again. This movie, Furiosa, is a uh, prequel. Not that it matters all that much. It is a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road, which if you haven't seen Mad Max Fury Road, you are missing out on a genuine treat, okay? I want you to understand and this is true for both of these films, okay? That these are luscious cinema experiences, okay? It is juicy, like eating a classic perfectly made cheeseburger. Like biting into your favorite food and having all of that rush of endorphins. Both of these films, Furiosa and Fury Road, are both exactly like that. It is, they are immaculately executed, exciting to watch. You will be engaged for the entire experience of both of these films. They are unbelievable action choreography. Aesthetics that are totally unique to this series, okay? There is no other film that will give you the same feeling as Mad Max Fury Road, except for Furiosa. This, this, uh, wastelander, giant engine, oil punk, dirty, violent, explosive, amazing experience. Just awesome. And when I say that the, uh, the action choreography is phenomenal, okay? It is, it is the type where you just, you feel yourself, you almost feel the need to go, that's so fucking cool when you're in the theater, but you, you won't because you don't want to be rude to the other people in the theater. Or maybe you will. I was literally like, wow, at multiple points in the movie where I'm just like, how do they do it? How do they make it feel so sick and punchy and juicy and, and chunky? There's a part in Furiosa where a guy gets pulled under the wheels of a truck, of an 18-wheeler, and the entire truck runs him over. And it's just like they've got the angle just right, the special effects were done, everything was done to line it up to make it the most viscerally horrifying and brutal kill that you've ever seen. And then there's 14 other similarly excellent kills in a, in a giant choreographed scene. I love it, okay? I love Furiosa so much. Now, there are a couple of things I want to talk about Furiosa. Uh, I don't want to do a whole lot of spoilers. In fact, I'm going to avoid lots of spoilers because I want you to go see it. There will be one section where I'm going to discuss spoilers towards the end of this little review, so I'll warn you in advance. Furiosa is a, it is a different film in a lot of ways from Fury Road. It is not just Fury Road again. Um, it has lots of shared elements. It certainly has the same energy level in the action scenes as Fury Road, but it goes in a very different direction as far as structure. Furiosa is a much more narrative uh, uh, experience than uh, Fury Road. Um, and I think that it's, I think that it's good in that, on that front. Um, obviously Fury Road was kind of famous for, uh, having a very simple narrative and mostly telling it through action scenes, uh, where, uh, most of the unfolding of the story is happening amidst a battle or amidst a fight. That is not the case as much in Furiosa. There is... You get more scenes with different characters. You spend more time 
uh, uh, you know, not in the middle of a, of a battle with, of course, plenty of absolutely amazing uh, action pieces as well. It's a more um, political movie uh, in that uh, it's, it's explicitly fixated on the politics of the wasteland in a way that Fury Road wasn't, and I like that. I like that it goes in a different direction in that front, that there is a sort of a zoom out uh, on certain aspects and a, a zoom in, in in others, where you're getting hyper-personal and you're also getting this angle of like, what is the play field of, of, the, of the wasteland in this world look like? And how does that contribute to the events that are unfolding? Um, and, uh, the performances in this film are fantastic. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy, um, plays Furiosa in this film, young Furiosa, and, uh, it's magical, honestly. Uh, obviously Furiosa was played by Charlize Theron in Fury Road, and the the belief of the, the it's like seamless their performances are seamless you can 100 it just sells 100% that Anya Taylor-Joy would age up into uh Charlize Theron's uh Furiosa it, it, they're so perfect it's it's a a a truly magnificent ability to sell you on the idea that this is not actually a different person at all that this is truly the younger version of this character um, and, uh, and I love it. Uh, she did a really good job. She plays the role very well. She sells the character very well. Um, but also a big shout out to, uh, Tom Burke, who plays Solid Snake, interestingly, which I was like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that we were going to get, uh, you know, we were going to have the per portrayal of, of Solid Snake in 2024, especially with all the complications and whatnot with Konami. No, of course, I'm, I'm just slightly kidding. But, but just, just real quick, feast your eyes on this, okay? This is the character that Tom Burke plays in Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. He's fucking Solid Snake! I'm not even kidding! He looks like and acts like Solid Snake through the entire thing. When when I saw that Hideo Kojima, of whom I am a big fan, as you can probably tell, um, uh, at, when I saw that Hideo Kojima said that Tom Burke was Solid Snake and he couldn't see him as any other way, I was like, now I gotta see this movie. And he bullseyed it. Like, I'm not, I was just, I was blown away by how, how apt that comparison was. Also, amazing, great performance. He played uh, a character by the name of Praetorian Jack, basically the predecessor to Furiosa's position of being the war rig driver. And he's kind of this uh, good-hearted, but, uh, but, but kind of gruff and aloof uh, character. <laughs> both, both Doe and I were joking about the part that makes him most like Solid Snake is that he is uh, an, he's an incredibly hot character that does not know what sex is. And that comes off like super strong in this character, which was just like, it's so true. It's, and, and in this movie, that's very true. You'll understand when you see, there's no way I can explain it outside of telling you, just go see and you'll understand exactly what I mean. When he's just like a, he's a character that's designed to be like unbelievably attractive in a certain way, but also does not know what sex is. And it's, it's amazing. And uh, of course we get to see a lot of the characters from Fury Road again in very different contexts, which is very strange. Um, you know, uh, uh, you see, we get to spend a lot of time with, uh, Immortan Joe, who is, of course, a, a favorite character. Uh, he is in a very different role in this movie, which is awkward and uncomfortable. That's one of the things that is, uh, that I like a lot about this movie is that there's a lot of discomfort with, uh, the fact that you know where the story is going if you've seen Fury Road. And it, it, 
the movie was designed with that in mind. So you're sitting here going, why am I, why am I kind of rooting for a Morton Joe? What is going on here? That makes me feel sick to my stomach. And uh, it's, it's very weird, and it's very good. Um, and, of course, uh, uh, Chris, Chris Hemsworth uh, plays Dementius. Uh, Dementius? In, uh, in, who is the, the new, totally new character introduced in the, Dementus, sorry, Dementus. I always want to say Dementius, Dementus. Um, and who's an amazing character. And this is the part where, uh, no, we're not there yet. I'll wait a second. Dementus is a very interesting and a very different character that we've encountered, than we've ever encountered, uh, uh, in this series really especially specifically there's no character quite like him in uh in fury road uh as in politically he's a very different character he takes a totally different role than any of the villains or heroes that we've encountered in these movies um he is uh and i like that a lot now this is the part where i'm going to get in a um uh, 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 I'm going to get into a, a small spoiler section. So if you are have not seen the movie, you want to just mute the video for the next maybe five minutes or so. I'm just going to do a brief section where I want about I want to talk about something that I really appreciated about the film uh, that specifically has to do with Dementis as a character. So spoiler warning starting now. Dementis. Uh, as a character is super fascinating to me, and Doe and I ended up talking about Dementis um, a lot. Uh, and the reason why is because uh, his character actually touches on a bunch of, of Delusian concepts about nomadic war bands. In fact, his entire arc shows the transformation of a nomadic war band into a state society. That is depicted throughout the entire movie very explicitly. Um, and it is sort of, uh, it is sort of overlaid on a, uh, an analogy or a metaphor of Riders of the, uh, of the Apocalypse. It's incredibly well done and I love it. At the beginning of the movie, Dementis starts as a pirate king. He is a, uh, he has a roving band of loyals, he r rules with a semi-mystical, uh, uh, you know, but vi a violent but but semi-mystical uh, position. Uh, he he represents a leader to independent bands. So he has this huge motorcycle horde with other leaders that are under him that kind of swear fealty to him, but are ultimately supposed to be represented. He's a pirate king. Yes, yes. Um, and at, you know, at first he is the, he is the, uh, the writer of, the, the writer of conquest, huge shout out to Doe for, for helping me work through all of this and see some of this. Um, but he wears a white cloak and has a, and has like a, a you know, a, he doesn't, he has like an uncolored beard and a white cloak at the beginning of the movie, the horse, the rider, the rider of the apocalypse conquest. And... Uh, and he rides around freely with his chariot, uh, conquering and 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 pillaging and taking and and splitting the the the, the spoils of conquest among his people. Uh, then he has a he re he finds uh, the citadel. He discovers the existence of a citadel, uh, which is Immortan Joe's you know holy empire basically, and he decides that he wants it for himself. And in this scene, uh, he gets splashed with red. Red paint coats him and his coat. And he becomes Dementus the Red, the, the rider of, of war, uh, covered in, in blood, a uh, red rider. It's incredible. And, uh, and in this, he engages in a uh, ill-fated but complicated war where he actually, he has a, a major victory, but does not accomplish what he truly wants, which is full conquest. Instead, he 
basically settles down. And, uh, and then uh, there's a bit of a time skip. And the next time we see him, he has been ruling over a specific location and he has become pestilence. The, the, rider, the, the, the next rider of the apocalypse, his, his cloak, cloak is, is black and his, his beard has gotten grayed and his cloak is all covered in oil. And we, when we encounter him, his, uh, his, his once roaming war band built for conquest and war has been settled down in one place and is completely falling apart. They're literally starving and all diseased. They're sick and all of this. He's literally ruling over pestilence itself. Um, and uh, it's incredible. And of course, uh, finally, uh, he progresses to the sort of final stage of the movie, um, which I don't want to spoil the end of the movie. But from there, we, we see the rest resolve. I won't, I won't spoil any of that. But this transformation from a roaming nomadic warband into locked in conflict with a state society, into becoming state society, into rotting as a form of state society is awesome. And that there is nothing like that in Fury Road that is only in Furiosa. Uh, and all of that is also told seamlessly. That political story is told also through a metaphor of the Riders of the Apocalypse. Genuinely fucking amazing. I love it. I've been chewing on it since I saw Furiosa. And I wanted to share it all with you all. Uh, for the political heads of you out there to go see Furiosa. But watch Fury Road at home first, okay? Watch Fury Road. You won't regret it. It's a, a hell of a ride, okay? It's one of the most, like, adrenaline-pumping, legitimately just, like, fuck yeah movies that I can think of. Uh, then go see Furiosa. It'll, it'll engage the politically-minded of you out in my audience, okay? I'm serious. I feel like watching Fury Road first kind of dampened my enjoyment of Furiosa a bit. Um... I think that Fury Road overall is a better movie personally than Furiosa, but I think that they work together very well and that they are, and that Furiosa is, and, and that Fury Road is such a rare movie that it's hard for anything to come close. And the fact that Furiosa is like this close, like this close to being as good as Fury Road is like a miracle. The fact you can do two movies in a row like that and have them both be such unbelievable bangers that are like just killer gold tier cinema. It's amazing. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Furiosa. Go see it. George Miller knocked it out of the park. Fantastic performances. Anya, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, uh, Tom Burke, Chris Hemsworth. Wonderful, beautiful, action-packed uh, movie rare movie that you don't get very often. Go appreciate it for its craft and uh, have a great time. Thanks for watching.